Mixins in SAS take a functional approach to generating content. Mixins are passed before the SAS file is compiled to CSS. Mixins can be just a standard block of SAS or CSS or a mixture of both. But not only that, we can pass arguments into the mixin to change the outcome of the code. Now let's start out by creating a very basic mixin that's just going to contain some CSS properties. So the way that we create a mixin is we use the at symbol and then say mixin and then we define the name of the mixin. And again, the name is very important. It must not have spaces or special characters and this name will be used to call it back at a later date. Then I'm going to open and close my parentheses and then I'm just going to include a few CSS properties within them. Saving the document in its current form will not produce any valid CSS. So what I need to do is go down onto another line and then I'm going to target the body element and we're going to open and close my parentheses and inside of there I'm going to call back the mixing that we've just created. The way you call back a mixin is you use the at symbol again and then you say include. So at include calls back a mixin. And then we need to type in the name of the mixin we want to call back. And that is the CSS properties mixin. And this is very case sensitive. Then I can open and close my brackets, end with a semicolon, and it will produce the CSS code as shown on the right. Mixins are passed before the SAS file or SCSS file is converted to CSS. So we can place in some SAS within our mixin. So let's take a look at the previous example where we had selector inheritance. Well, I can include a selector within this mixin. Once I've done that, I can then call back the CSS properties mixin and you'll notice we have this nice inheritance. And very quickly, I can just add in some properties directly on the body selector, just to prove that this is fully working inheritance via the mixins. And so now you can see that mixins allow for not only CSS, but also SAS as well. Now let's include arguments into our mixins. Arguments are simply variables that temporarily store a data value when the mixin is called back. We must first set up the arguments on the mixin itself. So with the CSS properties mixin, I'm now going to add in an opening and closing bracket before the starting opening parenthesis. In between those two brackets is where we declare our arguments or variables that are passed into the mixin. And again, we need to make sure we stick to traditional naming conventions. You can give it whatever name you like, but don't forget no spaces and no special characters. So I'm just going to give this the name of arg1. And then in between the opening and closing parentheses of the mixin, I can take that variable that's being passed in and place it wherever I want. And I can repeat it over and over and over again if I really wanted to. SAS is very strictly typed. So that means that if we have an argument that's being passed into a mixin, we must give it a value on callback. So when we're calling this mixin back with the at include CSS properties, within the brackets, we are defining the values for the arguments that are being passed into the mixin. So in my case, I need to define at least one argument for this mixin. Once saved, you'll now notice that the color CSS property has changed to green. And we can keep changing the value of this argument every single time we call back the CSS properties mixin. Also, there is something to note that we can actually pass in another variable and it will take the variable's value and it will use it as the argument's value. So for example, we have the color variable with the value of blue. And what I can do is when I call back the CSS properties mixin, I can call back the color variable and take that variable's value and then 
pass it to the argument of the mixin. So now we have blue being produced with the color CSS property. We can also add in more than one argument to be passed in to a mixin. So we can take arg1 and then after that we can put in a comma and then we can add in another argument to be passed in. So I'm just going to call it arg2 and then place it within the mixin. Now we need to make sure that when we call back the CSS properties mixin that we define at least two arguments. Then once we've passed in those two arguments, you'll notice that it will produce the resulting code. So mixins are a great time saver and they're even more of a time saver when you have CSS properties that have multiple vendor prefixes. So let's take a look at creating a mixin for the box shadow CSS property. So I'll declare at mixin box shadow. I will pass in the argument shadow and then in between the parentheses we define the output of the mixin. So we're going to define all of the box shadow CSS properties with all the different prefixes and keep reusing the shadow argument for each one of those property values. And then I'm going to call back the box shadow mixin on the body selector. Now, when I pass in the argument, what I want to do is pass in a whole block of data for that argument, which you can do in SAS. Once I hit save, it will repeat that block of data for all of the prefix CSS properties, and that means that I save a ton of time. Now, we may have a problem when passing in more than one data value to a single argument. For example, we can have multiple box shadows assigned to a single box shadow property. If I was to pass in another block of data to the box shadow mixin, we would cause an error with SAS. This happens because SAS believes we're passing in two separate values for two separate arguments, which the second argument has not been defined, causing SAS to error. To solve this problem, we need to place an ellipsis after the name of the argument in order to inform SAS we are providing a list of data to a single argument. Now I'm just going to tidy this SCSS file up a little bit because we want to concentrate on another mixin which allows for the at content directive. The at content directive allows us to insert a block of content that we create when we call back the mixin. But for now, I'd like to create the mixin in its basic form and then include the at content directive. This mixin will produce keyframe animations for different browsers. I'm first going to declare the mixin by typing at mixin and then giving it the name keyframes. We will also pass in the name argument so we can define the name of the animation. Now we can open and close our parentheses and we'll start with the WebKit specific keyframe animation. So I'm going to type in at hyphen WebKit hyphen keyframe and then we want to include our name argument. We are not calling this argument in a property value. So it is similar to calling a variable in a CSS selector. So we first put in a hash and then we open and close our parentheses and within the parentheses, we call back our name argument. And I'm just going to leave it there for now and copy this block of code over and over and over again. And then we want to have the mos prefix, the o prefix, and then eventually no prefix. Saving the file currently will not produce any keyframe animations. So we now need to call back the keyframes mixin. So I'm going to say at include keyframes. And then in the brackets, I'm going to pass in the string my anim. And then when I hit save, it will produce the keyframe animations. But unfortunately, our keyframe animations have no frames in there for the animation to operate. So now this is where our at content directive comes in and also where we define the content block. Firstly, we need to decide where our block of content will be inserted into the mixin. We use the at content directive to do this. So wherever we have declared a keyframe animation, 
what I'd like to do is go in between each one of those opening and closing parentheses and then place in the at content directive and end with a semicolon. Now we need to define the block of content that's going to be placed whenever the at content directive has been found within the mixin. We define the block of content when we call back the mixin. So where we have the at include keyframes and then we pass in the string as the name for the animation, we then want to open and close our parentheses. Anything in between the opening and closing parentheses will be classed as the content block. This content will be inserted wherever there is an at content directive within the mixin. Now let's start at the very beginning of the timeline at 0% and set the opacity to 0. Then we'll create another keyframe right at the end of the animation at 100% where the opacity is animated to 100% or 1 in this case. Now that we've done that, if you save it, you'll notice it takes that block of content and it inserts it wherever there is that at content directive. This can save us a whole load of time, especially when it comes to generating keyframe animations. And this can be useful in a lot of other ways. Within the content block, you can also include CSS selectors, other things like that and then you can shove it into the mix and it really is a very very beneficial feature. Now finally we have the SAS syntax which is very different where we don't actually have to say at mixin to declare a mixin and also we don't have to say at include when we want to call back a mixin. So you can see here that this is nice and simple it's very clean still and again, we are relying on a lot of indentation and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, it is a very nice looking syntax when it comes to mixins. So there we are, mixins in a nutshell.